after a three-week break, Jujutsu Kaisi is finally back with a new chapter and thank god for that because the fandom was just going insane. Loboto Mikaisen was reaching some level that just been annoying and not being funny anymore. The memes were getting more and more insane week by week and it was honestly getting out of hand. But even though JJK goes on break next week, I think Gege gave us enough in this chapter for us to talk about in the next two weeks. And I'm really happy that this chapter is about Sukuna talking and having a monologue about his ideals and how he changed over the past thousand years. I think after pretty much 10 chapters of fighting, it was kinda necessary to get something like this about Sukuna. So the chapter begins with Higuruma's sword being dispelled and I think we all saw that coming, there was no way Sukuna was going out like this. But there's something pretty interesting that he points out. Even after Higuruma's death, the effect of this domain with the confiscation are still active on the curse tool which makes it useless. Sukuna remarks that Yuji has completely healed his wound from before and comes to the conclusion that Yuji has reverse curse technique. At first, he thought it was Mei Mei's brother teleporting Shoko's RCT, but he points out it's pretty different from him and Gojo's way of using reverse curse technique. But Yuji having RCT makes me so happy. Gege is finally giving my guy some new techniques. Please make him uh, control Black Flash, and he's my best friend forever. But, anyways, Sukuna thinks that he can have some fun with Yuji. But for some reason he feels irritated and the fact that Sukuna is having a whole inner monologue because he started to praise Yuji is the funniest thing ever. He is such a hero man, I have never seen this in my life. But Sukuna thinks that maybe Higuruma's death disappointed him and maybe he wanted more. The idea of him needing someone to fulfill his own desires never crosses his mind. When he wants to eat, he eats. When he wants to kill, he kills. That's who he is or maybe that's who he was because he never thought about him changing over the past thousand years. We get a call back from Sukuna's discussion with Joku back in Shibuya on how he liked the desire and the hunger to go for his ideals. He doesn't understand why things felt different this time because just like the people who challenged him back in the Heian era, the ideals of Yuji and everyone else is to kill him. They are ready to die for their cause, they are nothing but martyrs and finally points out on Yuji being the reason he changed so much over the past thousand years. The opponent he was fighting back in the past was just people to him. He didn't care about their ideas or their motivation and didn't even try to understand them. But Yuji is different, he knows him. Their soul were forced to coexist in the same body and he knows better than anyone else. No matter how many times you break down Yuji's spirit, he will always get back up because he knows our boy Itadori Yuji Kun has an unbreakable spirit and that's why Sukuna feels irritated. He cannot believe that someone like Yuji, who is far weaker than him in any combat skill or jujutsu techniques, can even match him when it comes to ideas and spirit. He was just too strong to even entertain the concept of ideals. Man, I love this whole section with Sukuna acknowledging that he changed but at the same time he's still gonna carry out the plan to kill everyone and to break down their ideals to bits. But just before the end of the chapter, we finally found out that Kenjaku's instrument was for Sukuna to carry around the merger himself. So is Kenjaku just dead like this? There's nothing more to him? If he's truly dead, that guy was such a fraud. I cannot believe he was able to kill my wife, Yuki. Man, I'm so this is so tragic, man. But to finish off this generational chapter, the GOAT, the second to Satoru Gojo, Yuta finally shows up and is ready to fight Sukuna. And it seems like we are getting finally the King of Curse versus the Queen of Curses, Sukuna versus Rika. I cannot wait. Even though we have a week of break, there's so much more about this chapter that we can talk about, bro. That break came at a perfect time, honestly. Man, this chapter was crazy. But my question is, can Sukuna reach the level of antagonists like Merwem, Pain, Aizen, Krollo, Madara if you want to? I think it's definitely possible, but we still need more chapters like this to be among the greatest in Shonen and his conclusion has to be flawless, perfect. Madara is the only one who can get a pass because he was something truly you have never seen. This is definitely a good start, a good middle point for Sukuna. I trust Gege to cook because when it comes to antagonists, except Kenjaku who is terrible, if he's truly dead, he that man is ass, except him, Maito is an awesome villain if you ask me, and it seems like Sukuna is shaping up to be someone who is going to be generational. Just before the end, I wanted to add this quickly, uh, I see a lot of people saying that Gege is trying to make us feel empathy for Sukuna, and I'm like bro, did we read the same chapter? There is nothing about redeeming Sukuna. It's all about him coming to the conclusion that Yuji rivals his mindset and that's why he's going on the tension on trying to understand it. And it's really nice to see Gege giving us some good astrology because over the past week he's been getting so much slander. It seems like people don't even like Jujutsu Kaisen and think he got bad writing because so many characters die without conclusion. But life is pretty brutal like this, you know. I know Jujutsu Kaisen isn't perfect at all. I acknowledge it. 
I think some conclusion to some characters are kind of rushed and not well done. But saying that JJK has bad writing is just a lie. And one last thing, Gojo fans are so fucking annoying. I'm sorry how the curse are, but these people don't even like Jujutsu Kaisen. And they showed every week, they only like Gojo and that's it. I can guarantee you that if you ask them about Gojo's character and analyzing it, they will start scratching their head and stuttering because they don't know shit about Gojo. <laughs> we get confirmation about him being dead in this chapter and they still think he's gonna come back. Like, what the fuck? I'm sorry I had to go on a curse or on a rant, but I just had to see it. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and to subscribe. Would really appreciate it and uh, stay safe.